and welcome to the revision of the parabola. The parabola is probably the most commonly questioned function in the matric curriculum and therefore it's quite important that you know all the concepts behind the parabola. My advice is to make sure that you have a pen and paper in front of you and to pause this video whenever something is said that you find important. Right, let's begin. The first thing to realize is that the parabola function has three different forms of the equation which are all different ways of representing the same information. They're all different for various reasons. We're going to look at each formula in, on its own and understand what you can tell from each formula, but it's important to remember that they're the same information and that you can convert from one format to the other. They're just useful in different situations. Let's go down and start looking at the first form of the parabola. The first form of the parabola is your standard ax squared plus bx plus c. The reason why this is a parabola equation is that it has an x squared in it, and that's how you identify that any graph is a parabola. It must have the x squared. Now this format tells you a bit of information about your parabola. First of all, this c at the end of this equation is your y-intercept. So your y-intercept would be 0 c. Now the reason why the parabola and this form of the equation you can tell that that's the y-intercept is if I substituted in x was 0 because I'm looking for the y-intercept I would get y is equal to 0 plus b times 0, 0 plus c. So ultimately no matter what a and b are your y-intercept always ends up being c. The next thing which is useful from this form is that the a value can tell you your shape of your parabola. We know that if our a value is positive, we have the so-called happy parabola, whereas if the a value is negative, we have the so-called sad parabola. And those are the two only really interesting things that we can see from that format of the equation. The next format of the equation is probably the most useful, I think. First of all, you have exactly the same A, which will tell you your shape of your parabola, so your so-called happy or sad parabola. And then the most useful thing from this format of the equation is that your turning point of a parabola is PQ. So this is often called the turning point form of a parabola equation. Because if you have it in this format, you can immediately see the turning point, which is quite useful. Whereas if it's in my original y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, we have to do quite a bit of work to find the values of the turning points. Now we will do an example where we find the values of the turning points, but please to make sure that you notice that there is a minus already in the formula for the turning point equation. So if I was to show you an example, if you had f of x is equal to 3, x minus 1 squared plus 2, things that I can tell from this equation, it's a happy parabola. It has been stretched vertically by a factor of 3. The turning point is 1, 2. Notice the point, turning point is not negative 1 because that negative is actually part of the formula. So a second example would be g of x is equal to negative x plus 2 take away 1, for example. First of all, I can see that this is the so-called sad parabola. It will be facing downwards. And I can see that it will have a turning point of negative 2, negative 1. Now, why does this positive 2, why is it a negative 2 in our turning point? The reason being that your formula has x minus the x value of the turning point, which would have to be minus 2 in order for you to have a plus 2 in the equation. Now, I've just noticed that I did forget my squared, and I mustn't forget that, otherwise this would be a straight line and not a parabola. Now another reason why you could remember that this would have a turning point at negative 2 and not positive 2 
is that I hope we remember that if we add something to x in any equation, it is a translation horizontally. And if you add 2, it's actually a translation left. So the parent parabola that would have turned at the point 0, 0 would now be moved 2 units left. So it is now turning at minus 2. That's another way to remember it. And that's why this equation is particularly useful, because you can automatically see a turning point. The last format of the equation is the so-called x-intercept format. Now, I find this format useful when I've been given a graph with both x-intercepts have been given to me. Then I like to use this format to find the equation of my graph. So x1 and x2 would be the x values of my intercepts, and x and y could be any point that you choose to substitute in, as long as it is a point on the graph. Again, we still have our value for a outside, which is our usual explaining the shape to us. What we're now going to do is look at an example of how you can come how you can move from one format to another and what you can tell from each of these formats. So let's have a look at example one. Example one says f of x is equal to 2x squared, that makes it a parabola because of the x squared, minus 4x minus 6. Now first of all, just with this notation, please remember that f of x is simply a notation and it stands for the y value on this parabola. So if you feel more comfortable to call it y, that's not a problem. Now the question says, find the equation of the axis of symmetry. And the second question says, find the range. Now let's focus on the axis of symmetry. What I can immediately tell from this format is that my parabola is a so-called happy parabola. It will be slanting upwards. And I can tell immediately that it will be cutting the y-axis at minus 6. Now I'm going to draw a rough sketch. This graph definitely doesn't turn on the y-axis, so I'm going to make it turn somewhere not on the y-axis. I immediately know that this is minus 6, and that's all that I know so far, and I know it's a happy parabola. Now what an axis of symmetry is, an axis of symmetry is a line that divides any graph exactly in half, so that one half is a mirror image of the other. Now, in a parabola, it is always a perfectly straight line going straight through the turning point of my parabola. Now that makes complete sense because the left hand side would therefore reflect across that axis of symmetry onto the right hand side and vice versa. This vertical line makes a mirror image on either side. So if I want an equation of an axis of symmetry, it is x is equal to my x value of my turning point. This is clearly my x value of wherever my graph turns, which means I need to find out where my graph turns. Now I'm going to use this question as an opportunity to show us how do we move from our standard form to the so-called turning point form of the equation. Now your turning point form of the equation is y is equal to a x minus p squared plus q. Now ultimately here, I'm trying to find this p-value. Now that p-value is very easy to find and this equation is very easy to find by completing the square using your original function. Now most people don't like to complete the square. If you're happy doing it, that's an excellent method. If you're not happy doing it, I am going to show you a similar way to do it. First of all, I know that a is 2. I can immediately see that from my original form. So immediately I know that this is going to be 2 x minus p squared plus q. Now if I don't want to complete the square, I need to remember a formula which is not given to me, which is the x value of a turning point on a parabola only is negative b over 2a. Now Please remember that your standard form is ax squared plus bx 
plus C. So what these B and A and C refer to are the coefficients in my original standard form equation. So if I want to work out the x value of any turning point of a parabola, I can use my standard form. So it's negative b. In this case, b is negative 4 divided by 2a. And in this case, a is 2, which makes my x value of the turning point 4 divided by 4, which is 1. Now that immediately means I can go back to my function and I know that this graph turns at an x value of 1 and therefore my turning point formula must be x minus 1. Now this means I can immediately go and answer my question of what is the equation of the axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry must be x is equal to 1 because my turning point is 1 and a y coordinate. Now, if I want to complete my formula, I need to know what this q is, what this y value of my turning point is. Fortunately, we know that an equation links a y coordinate with an x coordinate. So if I have an x coordinate of minus 1, I can easily find the corresponding y coordinate by simply substituting that one into my equation. So I will have y is equal to times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 6. This will work out my y value of my turning point because I've substituted in my x value. So 2 times 1 squared is 2 minus 4 times 1, take away 6. So my y value is negative 8, which means I can fill it in on my graph if I was asked, and I can go and change my equation to 2x minus 1 squared minus 8. And now I've successfully converted from my standard form to my turning point form of my equation. It can also be done with completing the square. Now to turn our attention to the second part of this question, which said what is the range of f of x. Now the range of a function is the y values that this function produces. Now, I generally draw a horizontal line for myself, and I figure out where does, what y values can possibly be produced. If I draw a horizontal line there, I can clearly see that the graph does not get that low. Where does the graph get to? Well, the graph has a minimum, and it has a minimum value for y at negative 8. And anything above that, the graph occurs there. Anything below that, the graph does not occur there. Therefore, I know that y values can be anything above or equal to minus 8. Anything lower than minus 8 and the graph does not go down that far. Therefore, my range of f of x is y is greater than or equal to minus 8. While we're talking about range, we might as well mention the word domain. Our domain is the set of x values which you are allowed to substitute into a formula. Now generally when I'm looking for domain, I simply go and look at my function equation and I ask myself, is there any reason why I couldn't substitute in any particular x value? Would any x value cause this to be undefined or cause it to have a problem? And if I look at any parabola equation, there will never be a problem. I can always substitute in any x value I choose. So x can be any real number, which we often say x is an element of reals, which is the easiest way to say that.